Welcome back to The Road to Self Love. It's your boy, Paul Fishman, self love coach, and you do you. Oh my gosh, I forgot to ask you how to pronounce your last name Corinne Loperfido. Loperfido. Okay, so I'm gonna start over. Sun is coming up. Are you ready to go? We can take a ride. We can take it slow. Yo. Welcome back to The Road to Self Love. It's your boy, Paul Fishman, self love coach, and you do you activist. Here today with the goddess herself, Corinne Lopefido. Now, Corinne, I'm gonna let you take the wheel when it comes to introducing yourself. My name's Corinne and I'm an artist and environmental activist and women's empowerment kind of like facilitator of events. And uh, I have been a very self-expressed person my whole life, gratefully was not subject to religious beliefs that might lead me to think that I need to be a certain type of way in order to be worthy. I ultimately am not doing what I do, living the way I live and looking the way that I look to please anybody else. So, you know, my friend gave this great piece of advice one time. It's something that you can do to check in when you're feeling some kind of energy or getting overwhelmed by something is you can just stop and like think about the moment and energetically become aware and like point to yourself. You don't have to really point to yourself, but just like me, not me. And be like, mm. what am I bringing to the table and what are other people bringing to the table? Fundamentally, I'm not buying into this capitalist, patriarchal kind of conditioning of you are unworthy unless you look a certain way, buy a certain thing, have a certain status, whatever. You're self-realized, you know who you are and you're okay with that and that's so beautiful. What are like easy to do things that people who are listening to being like, oh, I want that, I want that, I want that, I loved the me, not me, but are there some other things that you can recommend that are like easy, just like front of mind things? Well, I think the first thing you have to do is get really clear on what actually matters to you, what you're passionate about, and what feels true for you. When you zoom out and realize that there are just so many people alive on this earth and so many different ways of being, that whatever you think and believe, there's certainly hundreds or thousands or even millions of people that feel that same way as you. And they might not be your parents and your best friends currently, but know that however you feel, whatever trauma you've experienced, whatever bliss you've experienced, there are other people that have experienced that too. By not trying to put yourself in a box, you're going to be way closer to finding your version of happiness and what that looks like because you're not trying to impress someone else. What would you say you're most passionate about? Like if you had to answer that question, what would you say? That's always changing because as I grow and evolve and learn and get exposed to new things, I'm I'm always shifting that. And so I went to school for graphic design, then was doing like underground DIY performance art events and and then started doing like women's empowerment events. Let's lean into the whole concept of uh, zero waste. What would you say to the person who, like me, who I just like, I'm just like, I could be doing more, but like I use my silicone reusable bags and I, I do my best. So what would you say to me? Make me feel better. You just have to ask yourself before you make any decision, what does the earth think about this? Mm. The earth was not meant to just give us everything we want whenever we want because we felt like it. And so when I was doing this project last year of not buying things or creating trash for a year, I was like, okay, well, I'm not creating trash or recycling anymore. I just, you know, I was living in Los Angeles at the time and I was like, I want to keep my compost because I was still creating food scraps, making food, but I wanted to cancel my trash and recycling because I was like, oh, maybe I can save some money and not even using these services. Why am I paying for this? And I called the city and they were like, no, you cannot cancel your trash and recycling. It's tied to your electricity. And basically what they were telling me is that if you have electricity on in your house, you produce garbage. I was like, well, I still want to use lights, but I don't, I don't need, I don't put anything in the trash or recycling. That's like not a part of my life. Why would I pay for this? You can come take the bins away. I don't even need these. And they were like, no, you can't do that. And so it really made me realize more like how deeply ingrained we are at this point that people just think that trash in the landfill is just an unavoidable part of life There's nothing we can do about it. And that is absolutely not true because if more people could ask themselves, what does the earth want me to do? Then they're going to be a lot more likely to make decisions that are conscious of the environment instead of just like, well, this is available. It already exists. I'm going to buy it. It's like, well, every time you buy something like that, you're creating a demand. The company is like, oh, people are buying this. Let's, uh, let's keep making it. People are, it's selling. 
And so by not buying it, we are divesting our money from these companies that want to keep us locked into like debt and consumerism and perpetual convenience and consumption because that is making their pockets fatter. You're so, you're so thoughtful, <laughs> you're so kind. Everything you say, yes, it makes so much sense. And then I started feeling a little bit of shame and I'm telling myself a story that like wanting to experience these conveniences is wrong. How do you, having a very elevated understanding of this and someone like me who's like aware of the consumption but kind of just like a little ignorant to it, like how do you go about your everyday like being okay with it like I would think that I would have a panic attack yes a lot of people are like well I could never do that and and I was that way too and it didn't even register to me that anybody could do that they just have to like shift the way that they live and relate to shopping and what they buy it's like reprogramming ourselves and seeing different ways of being and starting to take those actions such as having your own water bottle having your own fork your own cloth napkin yeah I'm, now i'm down with that so i think that now's the perfect time to play our first road trip game this instead of that so this mm. is not only going to be like a fun little game it's also going to be like an educational thing so i'm going to say like a consumeristic thing and then you can just like shout off the first like thing that you would do differently so we'll start easy like plastic bag you can bring your own bag. You probably already have some bags at your house. Okay, toilet paper. You can get toilet paper in wrapped in paper and don't get the big thing that's like a giant plastic thing. Or what I do for pee is I took an old flannel sheet, cut it up into squares, and then I used to wipe for pee that, and then I just wash it on hot with my towels. What about like dog poop pickup things. So one of my weaknesses in the zero waste way is pets, babies, and transportation. Those are areas that are a lot harder. And so how do you pick up your dog poop? Ooh, man, I don't know. See, I don't even like believe in domesticated animals. So dog poop is not something that I Beautiful. interact with I love, okay, great, perfect. <laughs> I appreciate you sharing and owning up to the fact that you don't have all the answers. Yeah. This is a beautiful, beautiful example of just owning your shit. Okay, so we're just gonna hop into our next road trip game. We are going to play Fuck, Mary Kill. Plastic, paper, cloth. Kill plastic. Oh, uh, but marry and fuck, I mean, ooh, then you're getting into the institution of marriage and what is the difference between <laughs> fucking and marrying someone. <laughs> Because cloth and paper, it's like, baby, I love you both. I mean, I would have you both in different ways at different times. I guess I would marry cloth and I would fuck paper. Mm. Love that for you. <laughs> so good. So what does self-love mean to you? Self-love has to be something where it's free from any kind of codependent um, validation seeking notions where you are looking for something external to make you feel like you are okay mm -hmm. because you are you you didn't ask to be born you didn't ask to be born where and when and to which skin color and which body type and all of that but you still are here self-love doesn't have an agenda besides love yourself i could take off my lab mic and drop it <laughs> that was a mic drop moment that's beautiful where can everyone find you corinne so mainly I post on Instagram. My Instagram is Corinne Loperfito. I do events and interactive experiences under the name Pussy Powerhouse. That's where I kind of post more kind of like political stuff about women's empowerment and abortion access and like destigmatizing sexuality. And then every once in a while I update my website, CorinneLoperfito.com. But definitely Instagram is the best way. And then on my website I have a mailing list as well. Well, thank you so much for all of that information and we'll definitely leave it all in the show notes. So thank you so much for joining us on the road to self-love and we'll see you next time. Awesome. Bye. See ya.